Hello and um, welcome to this mathematics class presented to you by O3 Schools Jam app. Now O3 Schools Jam app is a software which when installed on your phones or on your laptops enables you to simulate the conditions of jam. What do I mean? You are able to set the questions and the appearance takes on exactly how your jam will be on that day. That way you are able to actually practice mock exams, you know, as many times as you would like leading up to that day. And as you know, practice makes perfect. So the more you practice it, the more comfortable you will be that day using the jam system. So there'll be no fear, no jittery anticipation that you don't know what you're doing. No, you'll be very, very comfortable because this is what you have practiced time and time again. So um, that's part of the features of O3 Schools Jam Bap. It also has other features. It has the question search feature. Which lets you set for search for questions based on the topic or by keywords. Just set a particular keyword. Questions bearing that keywords we come out. Also, um, it has the information parts. There are quizzes. The Utrecht Schools app is generally just designed perfectly to help students as they prepare to take jam. Now, um, to get this app is easy. You can find this app on Play Store to download. However. To actually utilize this app to its full potential, you shall have to activate it. And activation simply costs 2,500 Naira only. That is all you need to pay and your app will be fully activated. This is very, very cheap. On payment of this amount, everything about the app will be open to you and you can totally use it. Now, um, once your app is activated, yes, everything is functional. How do you pay for this activation? There are several methods. Um, you, once you open your app, there's a place to get activation. Once you click on the activation key, it shows you the options. You can pay through Google Play. You can pay through Paystack using your ATM card. Or you can simply transfer to the bank account as indicated in the app. So any of them you would like to use, you are free. Once you do that, your app will be activated. Some of you will be like, um, I've tried paying for app online before on this or that. Maybe it has happened with another app, or you have not tried it with O3 Schools app. I assure you, try with O3 Schools app and you will not be disappointed. Any way you do it, your app will get activated. It is a 100% guarantee. And next year, you shall be the one to bring others to get your O3 Schools app as part of your testimony. With that, let's look at today's topic. And we shall be looking at binary operation. This is not to be confused with binary numbers, no. Binary number is another number base. This is binary operation. And what is binary operation? In binary operation, by the name, by means two. Nary means numbers. So we're looking at operation done on two numbers. Now we have some common operations, which some of us may not even be aware of. These operations are plus, minus, times and divide these are the common operations in mathematics now none of these need to be explained but within this topic we shall be using a lot of new operations and most of the symbols don't even have fixed meanings that means anytime an operation is given it shall be given the transition of that operation in terms of these operations that are already familiar with so if you are told for example um five operates with this operation is star now for example on two don't just assume what it means no in the question they will state it clearly where p operate on q for example equals to 2p plus q that simply means that in the case of this question it becomes 2 times the first number which is 5 plus 2 that will be 10 plus 2 which is 12 you see, that is the easiest way in which you can see this question. And it's really very straightforward. Simply put in your number where these letters are in the formula you are given and you shall get your answer. However, that is not all we do in binary operation, no. Binary operation, there's some special properties which we shall have to take a look at. And um, number one very important property is known as commutativity. There is commutativity, commutativity, 
associativity. There is also associativity. And last but not least, there is distributivity. So, commutativity, associativity, and distributivity. Let's start with associate distributivity, rather. Now, distributivity simply means this operation can be distributed over another. What do I mean? Say you are having x operates on y operates on z. Now, if this operation is distributive over this, then it can actually help you open your brackets. In plan, you will get x operates on y operates on x operates on z. To the point, it's kind of like opening the brackets. If the operation permits you to open the bracket, then yes, this operation is actually this. Sorry, I'm doing distributivity. I said this should be down here. Pardon me. So the one we just wrote on was distributivity. That was a mistake. This should be distributivity. My associativity should be down here. So this is distributivity. This means this operation is distributive over this. Now, for associativity, on the other hand, say you have x operates on y operates on z. Now, if this operation is associative, that means you can flip the bracket. That means you're going to have x operates on y operates on z. To the point. So the rule is simply saying, if I solve these two first, then solve it against this. And my answer is the same as when I split, solve these other two first before solving against this, then that operation is associative. Then for the first one, commutativity, this is actually the easiest one. It simply means that if x operates on y, plus the y operates on x, then that operation is commutative. For example, 5 times 2 is 10, 2 times 5 is 10. That means multiplication is commutative. But 5 minus 2 is 3, and 2 minus 5 is minus 3. Not the same. Therefore, this operation is not commutative. It's that simple. So the test for commutativity, simply try it in one way, then switch the numbers and see if you get the same answer. If you do, then yes, it's commutative. So please, keep learning these three properties, because often you'll be asked. Then, there's a special property of every operation known as identity. The identity element. Now, the identity element is simply that element which, when you operate on it, you get yourself. That's what it means. If P, an identity is presented with I generally. So if P operates on I, you should get P. For example, in multiplication, 5 times 1, 5. That means the identity for multiplication is what? 1. 10 times 1, 10. 100 times 1, 100. Whenever they operate on 1, they remain the same. So in multiplication, 1 is the identity. Why in addition is actually 0? 8 plus 0, 8. Anything plus 0 is that same number. So that's what the identity means. Then it seems to be that element that when operated on, it gives you the same number. The last but not least is inverse. Now, the inverse element is simply that element that when you operate on it, it produces the identity. Please note the key here now. If P operates on P inverse, I should get identity. There's a common misconception that 1 over a number is the inverse. No. Mathematically, 1 over a number is referred to as the reciprocal. Reciprocal, not inverse. But yes, 1 over 5 can be the inverse, but only when you are dealing with multiplication. So the inverse of 5 in multiplication is actually 1 over 5. Agreed. 
but that is not always the inverse. In addition, the inverse of 5 is actually minus 5, as we shall see. But what you should note is that 1 over a number is generally the reciprocal and not the inverse. So one more time, things you must know that you are very likely to see are test for commutativity, to find identity, and to find inverse. So one more time, memorize. Any element that when you operate on it, you get yourself is your identity. Now, any element on the other hand, that when you operate on it, produces that identity is your inverse. Okay, so it's very simple. And please note, this question can also come in tabular form. Use it generally the same way you use your multiplication table. So, you know, if you're having um, two year and three year, if my answer is six, it means two operates on six, on three rather, is six. If here is four, but here is ten, it means two operates on four is ten. It's that simple. You can read it off the same way you read the multiplication table. So, with that in mind, Let's open our all three screws, jump up, and see how questions on binary operation can be solved. Remember the key things identity, inverse, and commutativity. So, opening my all three screws, jump up, and looking for questions related to binary operation. Let's see. My first question is from the year 2000, and this is number 16. This one says, a binary operation on real numbers is defined by x operates on y equals xy plus x plus y for any two real numbers, x and y. The value of minus 3 over 4 operates on 6 is what now for this question see it's very very simple if you look at these they are pretty much the same thing where x is minus 3 over 4 is where y is 6 is there that means i'll repeat that into this formula so where x is i'm going to put minus 3 over 4 where y is i'm going to put 6 plus where x is minus 3 over 4 where y is 6. So that must give me over here 4 year, 2 year, 2 into 6 is 3. Minus 3 times 3 is minus 9 over 2. Plus times minus is minus 3 over 4 plus 6. And this is over 1. Therefore, my LCA must be 4. 4 into 2 is 2. 2 times minus 9. Is minus 18. 4 into 4 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3. 4 into 1 is 4 times 6 is 24. So minus 18 minus 3 is minus 21. Minus 21 plus 24 is 3 over 4. And obviously that is option A. So how we see? This is very, very, very easy. There's no stress here whatsoever. Moving on, let's attempt the second question. This time from 2006, question 37. 2006, number 37. And it says, a binary operation, and this time the operation looks like theta, defined on the set of real numbers, is such that x operates on y equals xy over 6 for all xy elements of r. Find the inverse of 20 under this operation when the identity element is 6. Now, if you recall, we said to get inverse, when the element operates on its inverse, it gives us the identity. So we are told, find the inverse of 20 that means 20 operates on 20 inverse, which can use uh, maybe k. When 20 operates on that, just to give me the identity. I will know that this identity is 6. Okay, so this is easy, right? What can we do? Is that we pause this first of all and say, 
But in the normal formula, if 20 operates on k, what should I get? This is x, y over 6. My x is 20, my y is k. So I should be getting 20k over 6. You get it. One more time. 20 operates on k. k here is the inverse. And the reason why I know this is that when you operate on your inverse, you should get identity. The identity element is told to be 6. But we know using this formula, if x is 20 and y is k, I should be having x 20 y k over 6. So if these two operations here are equal, that must mean that the two answers are equal. Therefore, 6 equals to 20k over 6. Easy. You can cross multiply. 6 times 6 is 36. 20k times 1, 20k over 20 over 20. k equals to 36 over 20. Um, you can do this very easily. 36 over 20. 2 into 20 is 10. 2 into 36 is 18. 2 into 10 is 5. 2 into 18 is 9. That means the inverse is 9 over 5, which is option D. So how we get this? Whenever you operate on your inverse, you always get the identity. And that leads us to question 3. Question 3. And this one is gotten from the year 2005. Question number 21. 2005, question 21. Okay, so question 3 says, An operation asterisk is defined on the set of real numbers by A operates on B equal to AB plus 2 into A plus B plus 1. And we have been asked to find the identity element. Now, what do we mean by identity? We've said that if you ever operate on identity, you should be getting yourself. So any element that operates on this identity, the answer should still be that element. Meaning that if A was to operate on the identity I, the answer should still be A. However, the normal solving is that A operates on I, a remains A in solving, or B turns into I. So I should be having A I now plus 2 into A plus I plus 1. Now, what does this mean for me? Well, quite simply, just like we did in number 2, this and this are equal. That must mean that this answer and this answer would be equal. So A equals to A I plus 2 into a plus i plus 1. Let's open the bracket. a equals to a i plus 2a plus 2i plus 2 times 1, 2. Well, let's collect that terms. Okay, so now we are going to simply say everything carrying i, which is what we want to find, go to the left. Everything without i should go to the right. That would mean this a i coming to the left to be minus a i then 2 i also coming to the left minus 2 i equals on the right hand side will be 2 a plus 2 then this plus a goes there becoming minus a all right now let's factorize what is common here well i comes out with me with minus a minus 2 equal to and over here, 2a minus a will be a, then plus 2. And obviously, to make i stand alone, I'm going to divide both sides by minus a minus 2, minus a minus 2. These cancel out. Now, I have a problem. If I look at my options, I realize my options are simply numbers. But I seem to have letters that cannot cancel out, right? Since they're not cancel out, I must ask myself, is there any way to make them cancel out? When I look down, I realize this was almost a plus 2, but they are now both minus. So what if I simply factorize out the minus? Minus comes out. Minus leaves a becomes positive. Minus is minus becomes positive. So that a plus 2 cancels as a plus 2. 
and plus over minus becomes minus one which now look at it is option c so i do hope you get it your identity element is that element that when you operate on it you get yourself as the answer while the inverse element is that element which when you operate on it you get the identity so please do well to memorize that our next question question four comes from the year 2004 and this question number 29 this one is simple this one says if the operation asterisk on the set of integers is defined by p operates on q plus the square root of p q we have to find the value of four operates on eight operates on 32. Now remember, we are not being asked to test for associativity here, so I don't bother doing that. Instead, we need to follow the order of operations, bracket first, before I come out. So solving for the bracket part first, 8 operates on 32. And as you can see here, what I simply do is that I'm supposed to put both my numbers inside the square root and multiply them. So that should be the square root of 8 times 32. Well. Simply open your calculator and ask yourself, what is 8 times 32? That is 256. And once you know this, the next question is, what is the square root of 256? Your jam calculator can do that. Answer is 16. So once I've gotten this 16, I now have to remember that it's time to go back out and solve this part of the question, which means now that I know what is in my bracket, I should be having 4 operates on my bracket gave me 16 so the same method would be square root of the two numbers in the bracket 4 times 16 and 4 times 16 is 64 the square root of 64 is 8 and that is option c so i do hope we are following binary operation is very very simple one of the easiest topics in mathematics. Okay, now our fifth question is brought to us from the year 2001. Question number 18 on our O3 Schools Jamba app. This one says that an operation, asterisk, is defined on the set of real numbers by A operates on B equals to A plus B plus 1. And it says, if the identity element is minus 1, find the inverse of 2. Now, this reminds you exactly of question number 2. Because we know that when any element, which is 2 now, operates on its inverse, which we can call k, it should give me the identity, which is minus 1. Element operates on inverse is minus 1, or is identity rather. And as we know, using the general method, 2 operates on k should have been 2 plus k plus 1. So if these two sides, the left hand sides are equal, then my two right hand sides should also be equal. Well, with k alone here, taking everything to the left, minus 1 plus 2 goes there, minus 2 plus 1 goes there, minus 1 equals k. Minus 1 minus 2 is minus 3, minus 3 minus 1 is minus 4. And that is option D. You see, very, very short, just barely six lines. Next up, we have one of those which I mentioned, which is when the question comes in a tabular form. 2001, question number 10. 2001, question 10, as you can see on your screen or also on your three schools jump up. This one says, we have to find the identity element with respect to the operation shown in the table. Now, how do you get the identity? Let's start with k on the horizontal column. Remember, the table starts with something like this. There's k here. There's k here, l, and then m. There's l here. There's m here. Well, I guess I'm drawing the table. So this is l, m, k, m, k, l, k, l, m. 
now to get your identity simply check what will k operate on that my answer will still be k and if i check when k operates on m i still get k when l operates on m i still get l and when m operates on m i still get m that means the only thing that keeps on giving me my question as the answer is m so my identity must be m that is all so you'll still be able to stress yourself just observe it when k operated on k it became l that's a different operation give you a different answer k operated on l became m different answer but k operated on m i remained k therefore the identity must be m full stop that's all so there's no need to stress yourself whatsoever okay let's move on this time we are going to the year 2000 this is actually our seventh question now we just did one year 2000 question 12 year 2000 question 12 on our three schools jump up this one says the operation is defined by a operates on b equals a raised power b then if a raised if a operates on 2 equals to 2 minus a but to find the value of a now let's look at it well a operates on 2 is 2 minus a but i know that generally a operates on any number should have been a raised to that number therefore this should have been a raised to the power 2 and just as we've been saying if the left hand sides are equal then the answers must be equal meaning that 2 minus a equals a squared already i should be able to tell that this is looking at the quadratic equation therefore i should be having moving everything to arrange properly a squared minus a comes here plus a plus 2 comes here minus 2 equals 0. now let's try and factorize this what numbers will multiply to give me minus 2 and add to give me plus 1 for typical quadratic equation and i should be able to tell that the numbers are going to be minus 1a and plus 2a because minus 1 plus 2 is 1 minus 1 times 2 is minus 2 so please note that to solve this properly you should have already learned quadratic equation if you've not please search for the video on that and learn it so once we get here using the general quadratic equation we group them two at a time What's common in this bracket is a. Factorize a out and left with a minus 1. Over here, they have 2 in common. We factorize 2 out, I'm left with a minus 1 as well. And if you remember, in quadratic equation, these two brackets are always the same. So, taking one of them, let's take what is outside. a plus 2 equals 0. That means that either a minus 1 is 0 or a plus 2 is 0 and therefore either a is 1 or a is minus 2 and if i open my options my auto schools jump up that is there 1 comma minus 2 and that is option d see so very very easy um let's take just two more questions <coughs> If we look at uh, the next question from the year 1997, question number 20, we have that x operates on y equals x plus y minus xy. Then we have to find x given that x operates on 3, or 2 rather, x operates on 2 plus x operates on 3 equals to 68. Now, I need to know what these brackets are, first of all, obviously. So let me deal with them separately. x operates on 2, using this general method shown here, will be x plus, instead of y now, I'll have 2, minus xy. xy is x times y, which is x times 2 here, which is 2x. And I know this plus 2 there's no number without x here so 2 remains x minus 2x is minus x so i can leave that there then x operates on 3 the same idea x plus 3 
minus 3x. And 3 remains. x minus 3x is minus 2x. So, bringing this and this to replace these two in the original equation, where I had x operate on 2, I'm going to put in 2 minus x. Where I had x operate on 3, I'm going to put in 3 minus 2x equals 68. So, simply call it like terms. Minus x minus 2x equals to 68 minus 2 minus 3. Now, as minus 3x equals to 68 minus 2 is 66. 66 minus 3 is 63. So, over minus 3, over minus 3. Minus 3 cancels minus 3. Not to cancel minus, so minus remain. 63 over 3 is minus 21. And that is simply option D. I do hope we get this. And we shall look then at our final question. And for this one, simply have to look at it. So this is 1995, number 19. Which of the following binary operations is commutative on the set of integers? Which of them is commutative? Which one, when you switch the numbers around, makes no difference let's try them option a says is number nine option a says when a operates on b goes to a plus 2b now with a bit of common sense i know this cannot be commutative because assuming i try it with two and three or two and one to make that easy when a is two b is one so this will be two plus two times one two that's four but then, if I switch it around and try 1 operate on 2, it will be 1 plus 2 times 2, which is 1 plus 4, which is 5. Not the same, so it can be commutative. Let's try B. A operates on B in this case is A plus B plus AB. Using the same numbers, 2 operates on 1 will be 2 plus 1 plus 2 times 1. Which is going to be 2 plus 1, 3, plus 2 times 1, which is 2, is 5. Then 1 operates on 2 will be 1 plus 2 plus 1 times 2. 1 plus 2 is 3, 1 times 2 is 2, and 3 plus 2 is also 5. And because these two answers are the same, that must mean this is the commutative operation, which is option B. But I just realized that. The question was actually minus, but it doesn't really change anything because, I'm sorry, I solved with plus instead of minus here. What that matters because 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 minus 2 is 1, 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 minus 2 is 1. So that is our answer, please. Sorry for the tiny mistake. And that is that. So I hope you understand this. Binary operation is very, very easy. And as usual, it is time for a few questions for you to try on your own. Do well, try and solve them, and you can comment your answers on that this video. And we shall make sure to respond to you if your answer is right or wrong. If it is wrong, I shall try to give you steps on how to fix your solving. So questions for you to try, you can start from 2006, question 42. Also, 2002, question 31, 1999, question 12, also the year 1999, question 10, and last but definitely not least, 1998, question 17. So do well to try these five questions on your own and do endeavor to comment your answers in the video below. Well, thank you very much for watching this class on binary operations. Please subscribe to this channel so you can get more videos teaching you a wide variety of topics across the different subjects that you prepare for your exam. Also get your three schools jam app, install and activate. My name is Athanasius. Thank you for watching.